Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today's video is sponsored by GlassesUSA.com. I am so excited to work with this brand because as y'all can see, as y'all know, I am a glasses wearer and so are many of my followers. So it's awesome to work with a company that has all our glasses needs covered. They offer such a wide range of sunglasses and regular glasses that can be customized to be for reading or distance or both or if glasses just suit you, but you don't have a prescription, then you can also get them for fashion purposes too. Because there is so much choice, glassesusa.com makes it easy by giving you the option of taking a quick quiz or working out what kind of glasses suit your face shape and needs. On top of the quiz, glassesusa.com has a virtual try-on tool, which really helps you find the right pair. I used it to find my new glasses and it was super helpful. I got three pairs of glasses in total and I couldn't be happier with my choices. This is one of the pairs that I chose. This is similar to the glasses that I usually wear. And I liked these ones because they have a cool color to them. There's like a purple, a purple tinge to the to the frames, which I liked. This pair was kind of giving me old school Sid vibes. I feel like I was wearing a pair of glasses like this when I first started making YouTube videos. But I think these ones are my favorite. Let me know which ones you'll like the most, but uh, I think I'm leaning more towards these ones at the moment. Oh, and I have to mention this because it is a total game changer. If you're like me and spend a whole ton of time on technology, then you will definitely want to know about the blue light blocking lenses. It helps reduce eye strain and that's something that everybody who wears glasses should be thinking about because you obviously don't want to make your eyes any more impaired than they already are. Blue light glasses are not only ideal if you're always on your phone or your computer, but they're also great for the outdoors because they include glare prevention and UV block. Also, shopping on glassesusa.com is a risk-free experience. You get free shipping and returns and 100% money back. So by cutting out the middleman, glassesusa.com offers over 10,000 prescription glasses and sunglasses, including in-house brands and designer brands, at up to 70% off retail prices. To get access to all of these great prices and deals, click one of the links at the top of the description box. Okay, so in today's video, I want to talk about the comedian, Kathy Griffin. She's had a long and controversial career, so I thought she would be a good person to make a video about. I'm going to go over how she has exposed a number of celebrities in Hollywood through her comedy acts and other things. I'm going to talk about some other interesting points in her career, and I am of course going to go over her drama with Donald Trump. So Kathy was born to John and Maggie Griffin in Oak Park, Illinois. She had three brothers and one sister. She first realized that she had a knack for comedy when she would go over to her neighbor's house and tell them stories about her family. In her book, she says that that is when she realized the power of juicy material. But one story that she did not tell her neighbors was that she was having issues with her brother Kenny at home. She got along with her sister and her other two brothers perfectly fine. And as she grew older, she did appreciate that Kenny was her only sibling that was kind of encouraging of her dreams of going to LA to pursue comedy and acting. But when she was as young as seven years old, Kenny, who was 30 at the time, would crawl into her bed and whisper things into her ear. He never did anything inappropriate to her while he was in her bed, but it was still a very uncomfortable and inappropriate thing in general for him to do. He eventually stopped doing that, but his behavior towards other people got worse as they got older. Or at least Kathy became more aware of how he treated other people as she got older. She witnessed him physically assault his girlfriend at the time. He started doing drugs and she discovered that he was a P word and tried to get him arrested for it. In any case, I had the apartment numbers of the alleged victims, and I actually tried to get my own brother arrested. I know that sounds... I actually don't care how it sounds. I called the LAPD, and I told them that my brother was molesting kids to the best of my knowledge, and I actually provided them with the addresses. They told me that unless the children themselves or the parents contacted them, they could not even go investigate. Because of what she went through with her brother, it played a role in her always wanting to expose shitty celebrities in her comedy acts, her TV shows, and in her books. It also plays into the... Um 
idea of wanting to be sort of a whistleblower in my comedy, you know, and say things that you're sort of, quote, not supposed to say. What she exposes about some celebrities is definitely nothing to the extent of what her brother did, but she's considered ahead of her time. The first thing that I would say aged well was something that she said in a 2013 comedy show. She said that Justin Bieber was acting black. And if there's one thing that I will always be amused by, it is a rich white suburban kid who thinks he's black. <laughs> it has been brought up on YouTube and TikTok that the era that Kathy is referring to is now being referred to as light skin Bieber. So yeah, she was definitely onto something. And she also called out Jerry Seinfeld. In her book that she published in 2009, she talks about how she wanted Jerry to do something for her and he just wouldn't do it. You know, and I wanted him to write something like, Dear Kathy's Golden Globe Party, be rooting for me, love Jerry Seinfeld, or whatever, I didn't even care what he wrote. Well, he wouldn't do it. All day on the set, he was like, oh, you're still gonna bug me about writing your stupid note? Why do I have to write a note? I don't wanna write a note. I don't even know you. I remember thinking, oh, for Christ's sake, just write the f***ing note. And where have we seen something like that happen before? In 2017, he denied Kesha a hug. Can I give you a hug? No, thanks. Please? No, thanks. A little one. Yeah, no, thanks. <laughs> of course, it is his prerogative to not want to do things. I just think it's sort of amusing how Kathy warned us that he does that sort of thing in 2009. Another person who she took aim at in her 2009 book was David Letterman. She talks about going on the David Letterman show and how she was informed by a producer not to talk to David during the ad breaks. Okay, so in terms of the actual appearance, there's a lot of rules on the Letterman show. So the segment producers had me kind of whipped into a lather of worry. And they were saying, you know, whatever you do, don't talk to Dave during the commercial break and don't hug him when you go out there because he's tall and he has a bad back and he might not be able to bend over and hug you. And they said, whatever you do, don't go off the cards. Which is giving major Ellen vibes, right? And then she ended up swearing a couple of times on the show, which David was not a fan of apparently. So she ended up getting banned from the show. But a month after Kathy published her book in October 2009, David came under fire. One of his former staff members spoke out against him about how he was creating a hostile work environment. Basically, David was cheating on his wife and sleeping with a number of his female employees. Other high-level male employees were also sleeping with other female employees. And basically what happened was that the women who were sleeping with David and the other high-level male employees were flexing powers against other employees that they didn't have, but they were doing it simply because of the fact that they were sleeping with these high level people and that they knew that they could get away with it because they couldn't be reprimanded because they were sleeping with their bosses. David apologized and his wife stayed with him. And at this point, David is in good standing with the public and Kathy, he actually lifted her ban. But I just think it was kind of interesting how she pretty much called it. That turnaround time for him ultimately getting exposed was quick. But somebody that it wasn't so quick for was with Ellen. Again, in her 2009 book and on the Joy Behar show, she talks about her experience on the Ellen show. I You're a little it'll... nasty in the book against her. Well, I tell a story about her. That was my experience when I was on her show. What was the story? What's the, what happened I, to you? I just thought she really kind of ruled that set with an iron fist in a way that was a little like, it, it, it took me back a little bit. Well, but, but if she were a man, you wouldn't be saying that. You'd say she was very strong and tough. Well, I thought she was, uh, she, what she did was, I th felt like she sort of had me perform like a circus monkey. And then in 2020, there were allegations against Ellen about cr her creating a toxic work environment. So the turnaround time for Ellen getting exposed was about 11 years, but nonetheless, Kathy called it. So another person Kathy called out was Dr. Phil. In a 2007 comedy special, she says that Dr. Phil isn't even a real doctor. Me? Dr. Phil. That f tool. I know. Can you believe it? Dr. Phil, who, by the way, isn't even a real shrink. Like, he's, he's, he's like a botanist or some shit. Like, he's not even a real doctor, right? Which, as of the last few years, Dr. Phil has been getting a lot of criticism for. Another person that Kathy kind of recognized for being full of BS before everybody else did was Gwyneth Paltrow. She has a whole segment about Gwyneth in one of her 2004 comedy shows. I was so in no mood for Paltrow and her big bag of bullshit. So... <laughs> And there she is. Gwyneth's big bag of bullshit is pretty accurate. Gwyneth is the founder of a brand called Goop, which has a whole bunch of absurdly expensive 
outlandish products. And the company started promising that their products could do things that they literally weren't capable of doing. She was selling a jade egg for $66 and selling a jade egg, there's nothing wrong with that. But on the website, it promised that it could balance hormones. Because it couldn't actually do that, her company was sued and they settled for $145,000. And Gwyneth's brand wasn't launched until 2008, so Kathy was calling out Gwyneth for her BS like this since 2004. So she recognized it long before anybody else did. So yeah, there's that. There's a whole bunch of other things that she exposed, but I'm just going to integrate that stuff into the other segments of this video. Okay, so now I want to talk about Kathy's relationship with religion. Another thing that she was a fan of was exposing religious groups. She went to a school where nuns were the teachers and they were all pretty cruel to her. And that is when she started to grow a strong dislike for organized religion. And much like how her love for telling juicy stories to her neighbors as a kid transformed into what her comedy acts later became, her hate for religion also came up time and time again throughout her work. She was calling out Scientology before anybody else did it. Sorry Scientology, I'm covered in body thetans right now. I'm an alien! What a bunch of <laughs> freaks! one of those things where you really like someone and then once you hear they're a Scientologist you're like mm, I'm out. You know? <laughs> so if you don't know what Scientology is it's basically a religious group that's considered a cult that brainwashes their followers into giving them all their money. So yeah if that's true it's, it's not good. She's also called out some high profile celebrities who are a part of that group. Thoughts on Tom Cruise, state of his career, the whole thing. <gasps> Who saw that one coming? Was mean? he crazy before Scientology or did Scientology make him crazy? So yeah, she's not afraid of getting any backlash from the religious group directly or from the people associated with it, no matter how high and powerful they may be. Another time when she wasn't afraid of getting any backlash was when she won an Emmy in 2007 for her reality show, My Life on the D-List. And she gave a pretty controversial acceptance speech. Basically, she told Jesus to suck it. A lot of people come up here and they thank Jesus for this award. I want you to know that no one had less to do with this award than Jesus. So all I can say is, suck it Jesus, this award is my God now! Some backstory from her book was that she was nominated for her reality show two years previously and this was her third year. She didn't think she would win but she still thought that what were the chances that she would be nominated for a third time now and not win on the third time. So she decided to work on a speech just in case she did win. Because she's not so great with sound bitey one-liner comedy, she enlisted the help of some of her friends to help write a good acceptance speech. Then it was her friend Eric who came up with the suck it Jesus speech. Then after she said it, the next business day she got a call from one of her attorneys. And then he listed off a bunch of religious groups who were offended by what she did. They wanted an apology or something but she refused to apologize because she has a no apology policy when it comes to jokes. But I don't apologize for jokes. So like saying suck at Jesus at the Creative Arts Emmys is so clearly a joke. But there were religious people writing in to advertisers to try and get them to pull their advertising from her reality show. Then what shocked her the most was that a religious group called the Miracle Theater paid $90,000 to get a full page ad about her. She was mainly shocked because the show that she was on wouldn't even pay $90,000 to get an ad about her. So she just accepted it as free publicity. The only backlash that actually really affected her was that she was set to do a commercial with Direct TV, but because of the controversy, they cancelled. They offered to give her a kill fee, but only if she signed a confidentiality agreement to say that she wouldn't talk about how they cancelled on her. And she didn't sign it because she doesn't censor herself. But yeah, that was a pretty controversial moment for her. And it was this pushing the envelope kind of behaviour that got her fired and blacklisted from a whole bunch of things. For the 2005 Golden Globes, she was doing red carpet interviews for E! And she didn't want to ask all of the typical questions like, asking what they were wearing. She wanted to ask random questions that would take them off guard. One question that she came up with was asking what their thoughts were on 10-year-old Dakota Fanning going to rehab. Obviously that didn't happen, she just wanted to ask something with shock value. She just thought of the most least likely person who could be going to rehab and she came up with Dakota Fanning. Hey, Kathy, what are you doing? 
Star, I just want you to know we're going to be getting a lot of messages of encouragement from a lot of the celebrities tonight because we did hear a rumor that little Dakota Fanning entered rehab today and we wish her the best. And before she went out onto the red carpet to ask celebrities that question, she ran it past E first and they had no issues with it. But the day after that red carpet, Team Fanning were not happy about it. Kathy got a call from their attorney and they wanted an apology. And Kathy was not going to give them an apology because of her no apology policy. Dakota was going to be in an upcoming Steven Spielberg movie and he was legitimately concerned that what Kathy said was going to affect the box office sales. So he even reached out to her to try and get some kind of statement out of her. I said after careful thought, okay, here's my statement. You'd have to be a complete f moron to think I was serious. The end. How's that? That's not an apology, he said. Well, it's the best I've gotten. I'm standing by it. What idiot would think I was serious about 10-year-old Dakota Fanning going to rehab? Kathy didn't budge and was subsequently fired from E. Another incident was when she was repeatedly banned from The View. So from May 2007 to September 2007, she was a guest co-host on The View. And then she spoke about The View in one of her comedy acts. Barbara Walters, who created The View, did not like that, so she banned Kathy. Her ban was lifted in September 2009, but then she was ultimately banned again in 2010 when she got into a fight with another co-host, Elizabeth Hasselback. You've said things here about people here that yeah. are A, untrue, and B, not so funny. So do you ever feel uh -oh. weird like them coming here, uh -oh. say, and sitting uh -oh. here and you kind of, you know, this promoting is, things? Actually, this said moment is what I live for, so bring it. And then after Elizabeth left the show, the ban was once again lifted and she returned a couple more times after that. So yeah, there has definitely been a few bumps here and there in her career that has limited her reach in Hollywood. Not only that, but she has also had a bunch of personal struggles as well. So in the 90s, she was a part of this show called Suddenly Susan. She didn't play Susan, the character that the show was named after, but she was still a main character who was in every episode. Once that show ended, there was a possibility that she was going to be the focal character of her own show. Everyone was telling her that it was going to happen, and then it just didn't. No one had faith in her, and something that she kept hearing was that people felt as though she was too old and that she was not successful enough to hold her own show. And that was a response she encountered everywhere she turned. So she ultimately had to settle for her own small-scale reality show on Bravo called My Life on the D-List. That show basically encapsulated her life as someone who was an outcast in Hollywood. And on top of that, through the show, we were introduced to her husband, Matt. And one thing that was made a plot line in season one was Matt's weight gain. He gained over 100 pounds after getting married to Kathy. She addressed it with him because she was concerned that it was a sign that he was unhappy in the marriage. But he insisted that nothing was wrong and that was that. Then halfway through filming season one after a day of shooting, Kathy got a call from her accountant. They informed her that once every three weeks, a total of $1,500 was getting withdrawn from her two ATM cards from an ATM that she had never physically been to. At the time of the call, the accountant had found at least enough transactions to amount to a total of $20,000. Since Kathy knew that it wasn't her who was withdrawing this money, there was only two other people that it could be, her assistant or her husband, Matt. Her assistant says that she didn't do it, so then she goes and asks Matt if he did it. He says no, but then Kathy informs him that the bank is retrieving the ATM footage, so if he did actually do it, then now would be the time to speak before he was possibly exposed in some ATM footage. And that is when he admits to it. And when the accountant finished going through all of these transactions, it amounted to a total of $70,000 that he had withdrawn. And he had also spent every last cent of it. He would tell her that he was going to work every day when in actuality he was not. He would just be driving around, eating fast food, going to the movies and spending her cash. Oh, and he says the reason why he gained so much weight was because he felt guilty about stealing her money. And even after that, she tried to make things work with him. They stayed in a relationship all the way through to the second season of her reality show. But she ultimately had to end things with him when one day she realized that if he had done this to anybody else, then he would have ended up in jail. They would have put him in jail. But Kathy did not do that to him. And she tells him this, that if he had done this to anybody else, they would have put him in jail. And his response to that was that 
He thinks that he would do okay in jail and that he could assimilate well in jail. That freaked her out that he seemed not to care if he ended up in jail or not, so she asked him to move out. So while she may not have called the authorities on her husband, she did later need to call the authorities when she got into a feud with Demi Lovato. Basically on Twitter, she was asked who the douchiest celeb that she had met was. She responded with Demi Lovato. It auto-corrected to Debbie, just so you know. And the reason why she said that was because on a night when they were both on the Tonight Show, Demi had finished performing and then Kathy approached Demi to congratulate her on her new song. And then this happened. And I made a point of walking over to her after she performed to say, congratulations on your new song. To which Debbie replied, what? I repeated myself, congratulations on your new song, what? And I just was like, all right, and walked away. So I remember thinking like, oh, you're, you're just an asshole. So yeah, that is why she called Demi a douche. But then after that, she got an intense amount of hate from Demi's fans. Many of them were so threatening that she had to get the LAPD involved. So when the LAPD became involved and detectives were sitting in my living room, they expressed that they had considered some of the posts from certain Levotics to be, quote, credible threats. You know, those adorable kids posted pictures of my home online. Uh, they had descriptions of knowledge of my daily routine. They suggested that people go to certain places where I hike every day and throw bricks at my head until I'm dead and so on. They printed my dress online, all this other stuff. Okay. Then not long after that, Kathy kind of believes that Demi mobilized her fans against her again because they both ended up backstage at iHeart Radio and without Kathy knowing, Demi took a photo of Kathy pulling a face while pointing at her. She then tweeted that photo and said, only a douche to people I can't stand. And then Kathy received another wave of hate. In her book, Kathy owns that she has made fun of so many celebrities before, but none of those celebrities' fan bases were ever as vicious as Demi's was. But yeah, even though she had a whole bunch of personal and professional issues, none of those things ever held her back. She hosted CNN's New Year's Eve live broadcast for 10 years from 2007, which was a pretty big gig. She was doing countless sold out comedy shows. She got her own talk show for a couple of years and she did a whole bunch of guest appearances on TV shows and movies. So yeah, despite getting banned from a whole bunch of things and being quite disliked by some other celebrities and encountering issues in her personal life, she was still able to thrive. But that all changed in 2017. On May 30th, 2017, she got into a massive controversy with the President of the United States at the time, Donald Trump. So Kathy basically got together with the photographer Tyler Shields. They get together every couple of years and do these photo shoots. And for the most part, they're supposed to be these powerful photos because that is what Tyler is known for. But other than that, Kathy mostly just wants to give people something to talk about. Every shoot we do, we do one like, uh, you know, we, we think of a song, let's give them something to talk about. We give them something to talk about. So in their May 2017 photo shoot, they came up with a plan to give people something to talk about. Kathy was inspired from something that Donald had said about the journalist Megyn Kelly. He said that she had blood coming out of her eyes, coming out of her everywhere. So Kathy got a mask of Donald's face, covered it in ketchup and held it up as if he had just been decapitated. I'm sure most of you are aware of the picture. The photo first popped up on TMZ somehow. In the TMZ article, they talk about how they got the photo before its release. It's unknown how they got their hands on the photo first. Kathy seems to allude to there being some kind of conspiracy theory around it, which I will talk about a bit later, but I think regardless of which publication posted it first, it was still going to cause a massive amount of outrage because that's what happened. Photoshoot was immensely criticized for being unfunny, vile, and offensive. She was getting a bunch of death threats. People were contacting her mother's nursing home and her sister who was in hospital dying of cancer was also getting similar threats. So she very quickly broke her no apology policy and apologized the next day. I sincerely apologize. I am just now seeing the reaction of these images. I'm a comic. I crossed the line. I moved the line, then I cross it. I went way too far. Despite the apology, the Trump family responded and they were not happy about it. Kathy Griffin should be ashamed of herself. She deserves everything that's coming to her. That photo is very disturbing. She was then fired from CNN's live New Year's Eve broadcast and all of her comedy shows were canceled in the US and pretty much all of her friends, except for a few, turned on her. Who? Kathy Griffin. Who? 
Kathy Griffin. Was a fine, didn't work, and she's going to now deal with the consequences. I, I didn't think what she said was appropriate, um, but uh, I wish her the best. And I mean, I lost 90% of my friends. Also, some behind-the-scenes footage of the photo shoot was released where it showed her joking about her having to move to Mexico after the photo came out. We have to move to Mexico today because we're going to be so yeah, since she was talking about having to flee the country and potentially being put in prison, her photo, which wasn't meant to be taken literally, was then being taken as an actual threat. The next day, she got a phone call from the Department of Justice. She was interrogated under oath and put on a no-fly list for two months. And then after she was off the no-fly list, she still couldn't get any work in the United States. So she went on an international tour where every airport that she went to she was detained for sometimes up to six hours. So then halfway through her international tour, she kind of snapped and decided to talk about some things. On October 29th, five months after the photo was originally posted to TMZ, she made a YouTube video titled, Kathy Griffin, A Hell of a Story. She starts off the video by playing a voice message left on her phone by the head guy at TMZ called Harvey Levin. In the voice message, he asks her to call him back and he leaves his phone number and Kathy plays that in her video. And she decided to dox him because that is what happened to her and her entire family when he was constantly fueling the flames on TMZ around the Donald Trump photo situation. And then she brings up Andy Cohen, who was her boss of 10 years when she was doing her My Life on the D-List reality show on Bravo. She has a gripe with him because in an interview with TMZ, he acted as if he didn't know who she was. Who? In her video, she said that as a comedian, she totally understands that if anybody who she has come for in her comedy wants to come back at her, but she doesn't think it's fair for him to come for her when she never came for him. She believes that Andy pretty much wanted to take her down and take her place in Hollywood. She mentions that when she first met him, he was a publicist, and then he slowly started to creep in front of the camera more. He started to do red carpet interviews, and when My Life on the D-List ended for Kathy, she was desperately trying to get her own talk show, but then who got his, their own talk show? Andy got a talk show instead of Kathy. Kathy did eventually get her own talk show, but Andy gave himself a talk show first, pretty much. She points out how he is the first television executive to give himself a talk show. In the video, she then swings back to Harvey and says that him and Donald Trump are in bed. So she feels as though because Donald and Harvey were friends, that Harvey was targeting Kathy through the TMZ blog. Why did TMZ need to report every single one of my shows that was canceled in real time. Why? What was the point of that? What do they care if I had a show canceled at the Count Basie Theater in Red Bank, New Jersey? It feels targeted. And when she got the phone call from Harvey, she was like, here we go again. He, Harvey is just trying to get some more content for TMZ to make things worse for her. She also emphasizes that Harvey is misogynistic because whenever there is an article on TMZ, that features a woman, it's always in some sort of unflattering way. And she also says that Andy Cohen is just as misogynistic as well because of the way that they present women on the housewife shows and like how they show them always fighting and throwing drinks at each other. She basically says that the attack on her also stemmed from misogyny. She goes on to call out a whole bunch of her previous agents and a whole bunch of people who she's previously worked for simply because of the fact that they did not have her back when the whole Trump photo situation went down. She also brings up a time when they didn't have her back in the past as well. She basically says that this fell outrage was caused because Trump, Andy Cohen, and TMZ saw her as an easy target to make an example of since they knew that nobody had her back. And then that was kind of it for a while. One thing that she later said on The View was that she takes back her apology that she did. She also said that if she had known at the time that there was an apparatus already set up to take down women like her, then she wouldn't have apologized. I believe the apparatus that she's referring to is the one that involves TMZ pushing out Trump's agenda. Allegedly. And then when I found out that I was really just kind of part of the Trump wood chipper, mm -hmm. which Michelle Wolf is in now, and you know, I didn't know they had this apparatus already set up before no. my silly picture. She also got lung cancer in 2021 and says that the Trump situation was a lot scarier than getting cancer. That incident yeah. actually was much more frightening than cancer than to me, cancer, honestly, yeah. because I will say, like, this is, I don't know, to feel like 
the whole world hates you. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Once again, I want to thank GlassesUSA.com for sponsoring this video and supporting channels like me. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drink water, be nice to animals. Let's take a moment of silence for everyone who has to deal with Karens. And I will see you in my next video.